Hey guys, this is Christopher, and in this free cat tutorial, I will be using the path workbench to create a simple setup and contour for this part that I've made. It's a pretty simple part. I just have a sketch with a pad extrude and then a fillet and a chamfer um, on the corners. It's two inches long, one inch wide, an eighth of an inch thick with a quarter inch radius and a quarter inch chamfer. So to get started, I only have two options available to me. Um, the tool manager and the um, creating a job. It doesn't matter which one you do first, um, but you have to make sure at least at some point you create your tools. In the tool manager you can um, see your existing tools, create new ones, or edit what you have. I am going to be using this quarter inch end mill for the contour. I won't be using the center drill for this one but you need to make sure you have tools um, to put into your toolpath. The only other option before we do anything else is to create a job. So for the base model, I only have one option because I only have one body over here and I don't have any templates, so I'll go with the default. When creating a job, there's quite a lot of options up here, five tabs to go through. First, you can give it a name, a description, and we can't change the model. We only have one body. If you had multiple, though, you would select it there. For outputting the file, you can choose a destination and a processor. There's a lot of options here. Setup is where you're going to give all the information about the stock size and X, Y, and Z axis and the origin. So oftentimes, I'll just use the create box. This creates a bounding box as small as it can get around your part. Um, you can see um, the edges overlap here, but not where I have my fill and my chamfer. Anyway, this would be assuming that my stock is the same size as my part. If you do the um, extended bounding box, it gives padding on all sides. This is one millimeter padding, 40 thousandths, on all sides but you could change these values to get different amounts of padding. You could even do a cylinder um, if you wanted to for like CNC turning, but I will just stick to the, the smallest box that I can. For the orientation, um, you can select um, one of the lines and then select an axis that you want it to be on. And by selecting the axis more than once, you just flip the direction of it. Anyway, I have it oriented how I like already. And now I can select a vertex. Um, there, select a vertex, and then I can set my origin there. I like to keep my origin on top of the part. And now I have the um, that part of the setup finished. Tools, um, you'll notice in here you won't see the tools that you created because these are the tool controllers, not the tools. There's a difference and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, you can add um, by clicking on the checkbox and creating a tool controller. You can also add this later. But I'll just go ahead and add it right now. So with my quarter inch end mill selected, I'll create a tool controller. OK. And here is um, this. I can remove the default one. I don't need that. And for this, I'm just going to make the travel speed 20 inches per minute. The plus 0 um, means a positive spindle rotation and this is tool number one. On more complex operations you might have many tools that you need to change um, to get your part. On something like this you're only going to have one tool but it's labeled as tool number one. The work plan um, you won't need to worry about for something like this. Anyway, um, after accepting pressing OK you can see that we have this job listed here. And I'm going to hide everything in my body um, because that that's for the creation of the part. We don't really need that. The important things now are what's inside our job. 
So right here, um, if we hadn't deleted the default tool, it would show up right here, but we had already added our new tool um, right here. This is the tool controller, um, not the actual tool, which means it has some, um, some different properties, like the, the feed rate that we've set right here. It doesn't have a rapid feed rate, and if you click here, it won't let you set one. If I type some things, it's actually not doing anything except the numbers are changing my view. Anyway, you can click on this um, blue button right here. It shows that it's a derived number, and it shows you that it is in this setup sheet, horizontal rapid. You can discard this and just type a number in anyway, um, or come down to the setup sheet, find the horizontal rapid, and set, oops, set your horizontal rapid to whatever you'd like. There's an, um, a bunch of other numbers in here in your setup sheet that you'll need to set. Um, the final depth, I'll make it an eighth of an inch because my origin is on top of my part, so my final depth for the profile, I want it to cut all the way through my part. The start depth, I'm actually going to do 10 thousandths above the top of my part just to make sure there's clearance. And the step down, I will do 1 16th of an inch. That's how far the tool will go down each pass. And on this number, I will add inches because oftentimes if you don't include inches, even if you have it set to US customary, it'll use millimeters anyway. So I like to make sure I always put inches on the end. Um, these heights will be OK for now. Um, so I'll go back um, up to, up here to create now my first path. There's all these options up here. Uh, probably the most common is going to be the contour. That just cuts out a, um, a profile. And there's a couple options for the contour. I'll just be using this first one that is, um, uses a base object. The others use edges or faces, but I'm going to be using this whole object to create my contour. Anyway, it won't let me change the depths or the heights um, because they're derived units and we've already set them. Anyway, in the operation, it already has our tool that we want selected. This would be like a climb versus conventional cut. This is um, this is climb counterclockwise would be conventional. I'll keep it in climb. And these other options um, are fine to leave with a simple tool path like this. So we'll go ahead and apply it. You can see it's generated some tool paths. Hit OK. Now you just saw the part move up all of a sudden. The reason for that is because we had moved the origin and so it moved our part, but that's because there's actually two parts that it's showing. If you click on base body and hit space bar to show, um, you can actually see there's two parts right here. The base body is where it will be cutting out, and the body up here, our original body, is in a different place. So I'm just going to hide that, and now we're looking at our base body. The toolpath, um, it it looks like what you would expect. The red is rapid, um, and this arrow that you see, the cone, shows the direction. So it'll start here, wrap it up, over, and down, and the green is where it starts to cut. So it'll go down, um, go around, climb milling around the profile, come back here, go down again. Um, and each time it goes down, it'll be 16th of an inch. Now, because I set the top uh, to 10 thousandths above, this first cut is going to be a little bit smaller. This is going to be a full 16th of an inch, and it leaves us with a 10 thousandth of an inch last cut. And I like that. 
So that means the toolpath um, is looking good. And um, also, if you open up the operations, you'll notice that we have a contour now with all of our data right there. You could keep adding toolpaths now, but I only need one right here. And um, when it looks like it's done, you can actually inspect the G code with this button here. Uh, actually, you have to click on your contour first and inspect it. And here we have the G code. Now it's all in metric. Um, so you might have to do some conversions. 6.35 diameter, it says. That is uh, 6.35 millimeters is the same as quarter inch, which means all of the offsets should be correct. Anyway, you could go through here and check your numbers, make sure it's cutting correctly. And this will be the G code that if you post process, that's the G code it will send. You can also simulate um, the contour. Here's our end mill, and it should um, follow the toolpath and actually shows cutting away the material. There, just cut it out, and we have our finished part. Hit OK, and it actually creates a mesh right here. It's called cut material, and you can use this mesh um, like any other mesh. This would be more useful if there were um, maybe scrap on the edges, like uh, if not if not all the material was cut away, you'd be able to see that um, and, and use the mesh for that purpose. Anyway, you can just delete that if you don't want it. And you can um, use this toolpath for post-process by clicking on it and post-processing it with this option right here. So that is how you create a simple toolpath in FreeCAD using the path workbench. There's a lot of other options here, um, but contour is a very common one and is a good one to get to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that that is helpful if you're trying to create your own toolpaths in FreeCAD. If it is, don't forget to like and subscribe to see the next videos.